Okay, we are live, Suzanne. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Kimberly Clark Professional Session today. Our session is going to be on the changing role of facilities management. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi, can you hear you, Suzanne? Okay. Welcome to the Kimberly Clark session um, today. Our role, um, our session is going to be on the changing role of facilities. I'm getting it's it's playing back to me in my um, into my headset. We can hear you well. Okay, I will uh, I will carry on. So to start with um, introductions, I'm Suzanne Halley. I'm the customer marketing manager for um, the FM sector, and um, I'm pleased to I'm pleased to introduce Loretta Lemongazi today, who is our Kimberly Clark EMEA facilities leader, and she is going to share with us um, the experience we've had um, about with our Kimberly Clark offices and um, her experiences of how FM is changing in the future. So to start with, it's certainly been unprecedented times. Um, we've seen at Kimberly Clark, we've been working from home for a number of months now, and I'm sure this is similar to many organizations um, across the country. Workplaces have been closed, um, markets have declined, and there is increased employee anxiety about returning to the workplace. Since the pandemic, facilities are facing new challenges. So there's a number of these challenges which are managing new hygiene procedures and protocols and making sure a workplace is COVID secure. Monitoring government advice. Um, as we know, restrictions are changing all of the time across the region. Balancing tight budgets, often there is an increased budget for um, increased cleaning or hygiene provisions. And um, ultimately, the number one goal for organisations is to prioritise employee health and wellbeing. So we thought a good example would be for Loretta to share how we've been managing some of these challenges within our own offices and also for Loretta to share her view on um, how the role of facilities management is changing going forward into the future. So um, Loretta, I can hand over to you. Okay, thank you, Suzanne. And thank you all for this space. I will tell you about uh, how we reacted uh, in Kimberly Clark uh, with, to the pandemic and uh, what has been the role of facility management uh, in uh, uh, this challenging period, that to say. So since day one, a robust governance uh, uh, has been established at Kimberly Clark to manage the many challenges of uh, uh, this new situation. And uh, we had to adopt a consistent global approach and uh, in order to be able to do that, you know, we organized ourselves with a global governance team uh, and, uh, and then with a cascade approach, regional governance team, country and site governance. So the top priority, of course, was to protect and is to protect our people and the integrity of our business. As you know, our products uh, are considered essential globally. So we we had to continue with our operations in our industry and, uh, you know, we had to continue to operate our business uh, during a period of a very high uncertainty. So by this strong governance, we were able to drive the company uh, through the wave one that was the, 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 let's say, the difficult, the most difficult from one side because it was sudden and unexpected. And, uh, uh, we had to be fast in reacting and make sure the continuity of uh, uh, the business was there. 
So uh, in doing so, we had to take uh, as governance teams uh, hard decisions, you know, uh, still with having in mind to protect uh, the people and the business, right? And the social responsibility that Kimberly Clark has over the world to deliver essential products uh, for uh, the day life of millions and millions of consumers. So we had to take hard decisions, and uh, but uh, you know the the this, the last month has uh, told us that we did the right thing. So uh, for example, we closed our offices much before it was mandated or recommended by government. This is, was all across the MEA, including the UK, and. Uh, uh, we, we established a dedicated committee in each of our offices uh, to monitor how the pandemic curve was evolving in every country and in every single region of every country in order to be able, when it was safe enough to reopen the offices, and this was toward the end of wave one, and when it was just... Uh, common sense, you know, and wise approach to close them again, as it happened, start in Europe, starting with the UK offices, unfortunately, and then with the, uh, with the, with, with the other offices across the MEA. So in all this process, uh, there were several challenges. Well, we focused on two macro areas. The first one was really to re-educate uh, our employees to the new norm and to the new behavior. And uh, the second uh, uh, aspect was, uh, for, and this was where you know facility management was critical, uh, was really to establishing, implementing, and creating and implementing new protocols uh, to uh, the work life uh, in our workplace. So we implemented a robust uh, communication campaign to our employee. And what you're seeing now on the screen is just one example, an abstract of one of the deck that we shared with our employees. So we went through a strong uh, communication campaign to stay close, uh, even psychologically to our employees, but also to help them uh, be ready uh, for the reopening of the offices and 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 be and have all the tools right and all the preparation needed to protect themselves and others of course so in you you see here uh, um, you know as I said uh, one slide of a training deck that we shared with every single clay C employee before reopening our offices at the end of wave one. And uh, we, there's nothing that you don't know there, right? We, we now are familiar with all the uh, principle of how to fight the pandemic, social distancing, self-hygiene, uh, wearing masks. But uh, what I want to emphasize here in this slide is the, me the critical message that we shared with our employees. There are two in this slide. One is what you see on your left, it's do the right thing. This is not just a COVID-related slogan at Kimberly Clark, it's the core concept of our code of conduct. So it's embedded in our DNA at KC when we hear these uh, uh, words, do the right thing, it clicks something in us, you know, about uh, assuming the right behavior, taking the right behavior, doing the right thing. <clears throat> and uh, uh, that's why we wanted uh, intentionally to keep the same claim also for the COVID uh, situation. The other <clears throat> key concept uh, uh, that you can take out of this uh, uh, slide, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> is that uh, the concept of that shared spaces is a shared responsibility. Now more than ever. Okay, as an enterprise, of course, we have implemented a lot of hygiene protocols, intensified cleaning. We will see uh, a little bit in more details in the next slide, but we have enhanced the responsibility of each single individual at Kimberly Clark that it's our responsibility to protect ourselves by taking the right behavior, uh, but also to protect the others, you know, by doing the same thing. So, 
Uh, just to give you an example, uh, KC employees, when they are in the, in the office uh, during the, the pandemic, are required to clean the surface and the tool that they use before and after they use it, right? And this is an addition to the uh, um, intensified cleaning protocols that we have implemented as facility management uh, across uh, uh, our global portfolio. So um, we have implemented new policy. No personal object can be left in the office. No personal uh, object can be left on the desk. Even if it's, uh, the, that desk is be, going to be reused by the same person the following day. So this is to allow the, uh, basically the overnight disinfection and cleaning. But if we go to next slide, Suzanne, please, you know, we will see a little bit in more details how we uh, deploy this across our global portfolio. So we, as facility management, are a critical player, right, in, the, in this uh, um, situation. And uh, uh, this is demonstrated by the fact that uh, since day one of the pandemic, we have been included in that model of global, regional, uh, country and site uh, uh, committee, crisis committee. So the component of facility management at every level of the governance of the pandemic is critical and it's there. So the office reboot uh, uh, that Suzanne was mentioning before, it's a clear example. We had to complete a thorough risk assessment of every single site with the same methodology, with the same protocols, regardless of the size of the office. We did the same in offices that were, uh, I don't know, with five occupants, uh, and the same we did with offices that had hundreds of occupants, right? So we had to go through a preparation checklist of more than 150 tasks and elements, and most of them, I would say, 85% to 90% of them were facility management matters. We had to transform our offices in terms of layout and traffic flows because we had to ensure the social distance. We had to minimize the touch point areas and we had to reorganize the space. We had to bring changes to our facility management operations, for example, by adjusting the, the opening hours of the offices to allow proper uh, sanitation, disinfection and cleaning overnight. Uh, we changed, of course, the mail service uh, uh, because it, it, it relates to touch points. And we implemented uh, these clean desk policies that if I have to find a, a positive side of this situation, we're living the dream of every facility manager. You know, our offices have never been so tidy because the desks must be clean every single evening. And the same the floor and the same the shared areas. And then, of course, we had to change uh, the hygiene protocols in the workspace. We have uh, new intensified cleaning specification at every site. We had to implement signage communication. We had to train every single cleaner uh, from our subcontractors and partners across the globe to the new norm, to the new standards. And then, of course, we had to get ready and prepared for the situation where we had a potential positive case in our space than what we do. We, we needed to be uh, ready for that. And uh, this required a lot of uh, pre-work to be able to just push a button and activate the protocol when a positive case uh, was confirmed in our space. Uh, and, and, you know, we had to learn. We had to learn a lot about this. We had to learn how to disinfect the sites. You know, there are, you for sure know, there are a lot of different methods. What KC has uh, um, taken and approved in our protocols is the fumigation through dry mist approach. And uh, we, we also have the use of uh, uh, UV lamps in uh, our HVAC uh, systems. So all of this massive work, of course, has been recognized by uh, our employee. I mentioned there the recognition from our uh, HR director for UK and Ireland, uh, 
and uh, how impressed they were for the quick reaction that we have and the massive quantity of work that we were able to manage in a short, very short period of time. But, you know, what could be uh, uh, of most interest for this group is the feedback that we received from our colleagues, right, the end user. And the, the feedback, uh, the consistent feedback that we received across the globe, not only in the UK or in EMEA, is that they felt safe at KC. So in, a, in an environment uh, of so much uh, uncertainty and uh, news, all kind of news coming from everywhere, you know, feeling safe when you sit at your desk and you start your day job, you know, I think it's... Uh, uh, the best and greatest achievement that as facility management as an, and as an enterprise we could achieve with our colleagues. So uh, moving on on how and what this meant for facility management, uh, of course there is a, a new spotlight on us, right? You know, normally our job is a lot behind the scene, but uh, we are now the subject matter experts for most of the pandemic countermeasures. And uh, this is leading to an evolution of our function and a different level of visibility uh, across the enterprise. So I tried to summarize in this slide, you know, what are the, the, the main changes that we are living now? We are interfacing in the company with new departments or we are doing it uh, totally differently now. Um, an example is with uh, security for access control, uh, with the health department, uh, with HR, with health and safety. Of course, we interacted with health and safety even before because of the, I don't know, firefighting, fire systems. But now it's on a totally different uh, um, dimension, I would say, in a totally different level, the level of interaction that we have with uh, health and safety. And the same with engineering, when it's about a technical system like HVAC, uh, with real estate, uh, even our cousins, right, in the, in the enterprises, you know, we need to think strategically what this means from a real estate perspective. We have new stakeholders of all sorts of levels in the company, but we have mostly new stakeholders at the very executive level. We were in a call last week with our C global CEO and the CFO and his leadership team. So it never happened before that we were consulted to this high level in the, in the enterprise. And of course, we are called to look at the workplace of the future, what this will mean in the future, what, how this pandemic change our workplace. And it's very clear, you know, the trend is that we will need to be able to ensure a higher level of flexibility to our employees. Uh, so when, how do we translate this into our workplace, right? So we are talking a lot of unassigned desk policies uh, to make and create more space for uh, collaboration environment, touchdown environments in the office space. So this will be really a turnaround in the uh, workplace strategy and we are a critical component of creating these new standards. Um, we need to be extremely fast, extremely agile and flexible to react to the new challenge because uh, and in order to be there, to, to, to be so, you know, we need to be prepared. We need to have digested much before than all the, the rest of the company, the rest of the colleagues, all the protocols that we must have in place, right? Uh, we are on a continuous learning journey because, uh, uh, you know, wave, for example, wave one is very different from wave uh, two. And in wave two, that is what we're living now, we are constantly learning new, new elements, right? Uh, HVAC, again, is an example that was a little bit underestimated in, uh, in wave uh, uh, one from the uh, FM industry or in the overall industry, but uh, we were anticipating some of the standards that we are now seeing deployed uh, almost everywhere. 
So when it's about installing UV 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 lamps in within the the, the HVAC system, intake uh, uh, more fresh air. You know, it's becoming more critical now that we are going into the winter season. Uh, and it is, it's going to be also more expensive for the company, uh, of course, from a utility standpoint. So this is how we are constantly uh, adopting and adapting the new standard and contributing to creating the new standards across the globe. And we have to stay tuned, always. We are called in so many different areas that we were not touching before because uh, we are absolutely... Uh, critical to the um, to the to the to the reaction of the enterprise to the new challenges. So I will not hide it, it's uh, uh, tiring, <laughs> but uh, this is uh, uh, an historical moment in the facility management function. You know, we are uh, uh, living the momentum uh, as an evolving an evolution momentum of our function, and uh, it's. Uh, exciting to uh, a certain extent, I have to say, uh, because we live in it as a big opportunity to deliver value to our enterprise. So I close it here. Thank you again for the opportunity to be to you, with you today and over to you, Suzanne. Thank you, Loretta. It's really good to hear your um, experiences there of how your role in facility management has changed and will change going into the future. Um, that brings me on just to give a very short summary about our 360 degree hygiene and protection program. The program has been set up to um, give people confidence as they return to the workplace and to ensure the workplace is safe. So there's um, three steps. The first step is about um, we can support with identifying your need areas. And um, we do this by carrying out a virtual hygiene walk, which is a free service where we can um, assess a facility and identify hotspot areas that are highly touched um, areas and recommend the correct cleaning and hygiene protocols and the hygiene solutions that should be put in the um, right location. The second stage is um, implement. So we look at implementing um, the correct hand hygiene procedures and also cleaning and um, hygiene protocols in a sense of a two stage surface um, cleaning and disinfecting um, process. And then the third stage is about promoting and communicating um, the hygiene practices that are in place. So Loretta talked about how important this is with changing people's behavior to ensure um, they become new habits. And um, that is the most important part. And as part of this program, we can provide the communications to support that. So that just leaves me to say thank you very much for your time today. Um, please do visit our online booth. You can find out more information and ask any questions that you have. And if you would like to book a virtual hygiene walk with us, you can go to the link on the slide um, and that also provides you with more information about the 360 programme. Thank you.